Welcome to No Dogs in Space, the stream, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no Dogs in Space, the t-shirt, the lunchbox. My name is Marcus Parks. I'm Carolina Hidalgo. Uncle Sherry says, I got a case of the Mondays and this is the cure. Thank you, Uncle Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still screaming. <laughs> I'm still screaming because you know what we you know we gotta um you know uh yeah exactly knock with the big guy up there uh we uh one of us have fallen yes um R.I.P. to Kent Stacks uh the uh not the original I think he was the second original drummer of Scream mm -hmm. uh that would be after Dave Grohl uh no he was before Dave Grohl was he yes there okay. was like another guy like Steve or someone from high school <laughs> and then he left. And then uh, Kent, he, he filled in. And then when he left, um, Dave Grohl came in. Ah. And that's when he did the whole thing. Like, you know, when you join the army or something, he pretends he's older, but mm -hmm. he's really 17. Yeah. And then he, he like leaves school. Like he actually had to drop out of school. His mom wrote a whole book about it. I read this afternoon. <laughs> And there's a whole chapter about like, my son was so nice, but he kept failing out of school. So I let him go on tour with a bunch of people. <laughs> but this man named Pete Stahl was so kind to him. Well, it's like, it's there's two stories. There's uh -huh. there's Dave Grohl, where everything works out great. Yes. And he's like a well-adjusted man. And, yes. you know, he's and everything works out <laughs> wonderful for him. And then there's Tommy Stenson. Mm. That's the other side of yeah. just let him drop out of school and let him be a rock and roll star. And, you know, and then he has, you know, decades aids of addiction and pain and misery until today i hear he's, he's quite great. well adjusted yeah right considering considering he's doing all right i do know that he does ask if you have a backyard and if you have 50 people he will go play <laughs> which is there's nothing wrong with that there's That's no great. shame in that I, I would also do that in my in my later years and by the way on a future stream probably on the next one we will talk about the let it bleed edition of tim that just yes. came out we're yes. just waiting for the full box we're, we, we it hasn't come in yet we pre-ordered the box set mm -hmm. and rough trade apparently is quite slow with what they may what they use to mail things out with mm -hmm. so it, we're saying that we're not going to listen to it and i've listened to a tiny bit of bastards of young and it is incredible uh but we're waiting until the record Records come in so we can sit down and actually absorb it. So we will be talking about that next week. But this week we are talking about... Holdenator's Ho is raiding with a party of 54. <laughs> I've been told. Thanks, the everyone. The producer in my ear. Yes. No, um, thank you so much, Holden, and and your, and the things you do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. what was I supposed to say? Scream. Scream. Do you want to get into Scream now? I don't know. What do you think? Should we go into a video? Whoa, yes. Let's do a video, and, and then we can open for Q&A. Because remember, guys, I don't know if you know this, but I bring my laptop from work every time we do this in case anyone has a question about anything in the series because I got all my notes and everything's on the Google drive and everything so I can answer that for you immediately mm -hmm. like because a lot of people ask me like what do you know actually not a lot of people <laughs> but maybe you can start right now okay yeah but, but yeah yes you yeah. want to do a video yeah we'll talk about screen when we get to the book hall when we get to the vinyl hall mm -hmm. uh, all that stuff is still Good coming idea. we got some super cool records coming up uh, and we're actually going to play a clip uh, from one of the songs from one of those records later on a new song that I discovered that you're going to love too uh, but before that let's check out this video this video is incredible it's from a, I wish I knew more about the competition that this guy oh uh, i do actually you actually know more about this yeah. do you want to do you want to intro this video uh no uh, i don't <laughs> <laughs> i can't find it i have my laptop that has everything it's um it, it's this uh kind of championship that they had in london in 1991 mm -hmm. on um it, let, let, let's roll the tape actually are you yeah. ready are you ready are you ready for this are you ready are you ready are you ready for this are you ready are you ready for this? Are you ready? 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 And that's all like live, right? That's all like just him using the reels. That's all live. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? So do you like it? Do you like it? Do you like it like this? It's incredible. So what I remember is that this guy is uh, Latvian. Yeah. Uh, and this is in 1991. So that was when his people were recently uh, 
independent sized. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, well, after the Soviet Union broke up. Or, yes. Well, he was credited as being from the USSR, so maybe it was like right in that middle time. All oh, right. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, because they were, but he likes to be called Latvian. Okay. Or at least they, a lot of them do. And so this is him at 25 years old. He won like a big competition. He ends up in London. This is him. He's like doing amazing. I believe he wins. Of course he wins. Who could possibly beat this? Because he's also got a cigarette hanging from his mouth the entire time as well. Which is really cool from the... Uh, I mean, okay, so this guy's from the Baltic States, right? Uh, everything is about doing it from a cigarette hanging from your mouth. <laughs> and second of all, what they were talking about, I remember in the... Um, well, well I'll, I'll let this play. So that's really cool because he's doing it like Grandmaster Flash does it, but that's with records. So he's not a record DJ. He's a tape DJ. That's incredible. Right? And so what they said was that like in Latvia back in the day, they couldn't afford records and usually records would just come in very, it'd be very rare. Yeah. So you would make tapes, you would record them or you would do them off, uh, record them off the radio maybe. And then that's what they would use because there's not like a ton of records for people to use and like play with and stuff. So they had to do it out of necessity it's very punk very yeah. cool well tapes are yeah tapes are definitely a big thing because i remember reading uh an interview or maybe watching an interview with eugene hoots who's the lead singer of gogo bordello uh yeah. and he said that how he was introduced to punk was he got a hold of a tape like a reel-to-reel -reel tape of the stooges i think it was the first stooges record oh that's cool what do you do with it uh he, he listened to it he fucking oh, he, uh, <laughs> i thought he played with it yeah, or he yeah. made collage art with it or something i mean look at the latvian <laughs> They're killing no, it. No, he listened to it and made his way to New York City. He's like, I want to do that. That's oh. what I want to do. Uh, this, we have an, a question from Mrs. Scribbles. Do you have any video game music on vinyl? If so, which one? Yes. 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 Multiple, multiple video game soundtracks on vinyl. And, so, and I also have a lot of them. Uh, well, I mean, not on vinyl, but I listen to them all day long because they're really good at like, helping you concentrate. By yeah. The way. So I've got two from Bit Brigade. Uh, I got the Legend of Zelda uh, collection mm. they did and the Mega Man 2 collection they did, which is really incredible. Uh, I got the Fallout 3 box set uh, that has it's like three or four records it's got you know all of the music in the game you know all of the background music but it's also got a full record that's all of the uh, galaxy news radio galaxy news radio the fucking all that great music you can listen you know I'm, you know i, I don't want to set the world on fire uh i've got a dark find the time <laughs> to listen to all these have you found the time to listen to these you were there when i was listening to all of them i <laughs> for some reason it did not imprint in my mind for some reason, yeah. I, have, I have no memory of that. And also, we're not together all the time. When you leave yes, the house, I do stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I leave the house, you do stuff. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when uh, I also got the uh, Dark Souls soundtrack mm -hmm. on vinyl, the very first one, the, really the music good. from the first one, and that one's really cool. Mm -hmm. I, that's my favorite one that I have, I think. Although the Fallout 3 one is really cool because it came with a, a Pip-Boy mask as well. So, yeah. Quiet a few on vinyl. I would love <laughs> to get the mariachi entertainment system on vinyl uh, or, you know, some version of Bloody Tears from, you know, Castlevania 2. Because, you know, how much I love Castlevania 2. <laughs> I love it. That's great. No, I'm that's that's fantastic. I, I don't know anything you just said. Um, <laughs> Uh, Carlos Please 4077 said, Marcus, I never felt more validated than when you said that Dwight Yoakam's cover of Crazy Little Thing called Love is Better Than the Queen Version. Absolutely, the Queen Version is trash. Wow. I'm, I'm saying wow. it. I'm saying we it right now. We didn't rehearse this. And <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize it was we that got bad. It. And producer Eric is clapping me. He is absolutely, he is agreeing with me completely. I've been blindsided. <laughs> I mean, Queen's good. Queen's like, good, good, but their version right? of Crazy Little Thing Called Love is fucking terrible. It is absolutely awful. I have nothing to compare it to. And the thing is about Dwight Yoakam, Dwight Yoakam has legitimate punk cred. Yes, he does, right? Yeah. 
Dwight Yoakam, dinner, way back in the early 80s, he was a part, instead, he couldn't get into the Nashville scene doing country and all that shit. So what he did, he's from Bakersfield. He moved to Los Angeles and he started playing shows with X yeah. and, and the Gun Club. Like, <laughs> I so, respect that. I respect I really that do. wholeheartedly. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. And then he, uh, and then after he started getting more heat, he hooked up with Buck Owens and recorded the, I think it was uh, The Streets of Bakersfield, which is an incredible song. And, and it's a, fucking punk country songs like you don't know me but you don't like me it's like fucking it's such a big fuck you to nashville right when nashville needed a real big fuck you yeah so yeah i'm i'm big i'm a big dwight yoakam booster uh if nothing else but for you know the balls he had to go out in front of a punk crowd you know and play guitars and cadillacs yeah no uh uh, Scream, by the way, the band Scream, they also had a hard time. <laughs> Just so you know, when they all shared the bill together. But, you know, back in the day, I think uh, a lot of times bands would be kind of, uh, a lot of times the bands would be booked in a way that it would be different kinds of music. Because yeah. they thought it'd be cool to have like a, a, a like kind of an assortment of, of different kind of styles. So I totally get why they would do that, especially in the West Coast. Yeah. The West Coast was like very famous for doing that. Los Angeles is big like that because like you could go to a show and you could see like X, uh, the Weirdos. And then like Santana yeah. or something. Los Lobos. Los Lobos like, as Lo well. Yeah, Los Lobos was like directly in that scene as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you could see all kinds of cool shit all at once. Yeah, I would say, yeah, L.A. definitely had more diversity when it came to the different types of bands that would be on a bill. That's why I like L.A. Like, I, we've been here for almost a year now, and that I like it because people around here will be like, I'll put on a show, like, next weekend. Mm -hmm. Like, Tommy Stinson is in a backyard somewhere <laughs> next to someone's pool. He's ready to play. And then, because a lot of people live here, so it kind of makes sense like we'll just go down the road or maybe 30 minutes away because <laughs> we don't live anywhere near where cool people live but no we don't no no we, <laughs> live, no, we live in the valley we don't live anywhere near Whatever. where cool shit happens there are cool people all. around us no there are cool people around us but, but cool no, shit doesn't happen around us at all it doesn't actually no, no our, but that doesn't matter we, yeah. we don't have to get into that yeah do we have any questions uh yeah lazarus uh underscore grim ask was there any crossover in the crowd rock era bands and the red arm Army faction or other terrorist groups from the 1970s. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I don't know if you have heard Almond, our Amandul 2 part 2 episode, but we definitely crossed um, the streams. Touch tips. We touched tips uh, with Amandul 2 and and the RAF or Bader Meinhof group. And, um, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit maybe. Maybe with Can. I know like because everyone kind of had a run in where in one way or another they were maybe profiled as someone from the RAF yeah. just because of their age or they like had long hair, counterculture, anything at all. They were always profiled for that. So uh, pretty much everyone during that period would definitely be like, yeah, I was arrested because I looked just like Gudrun Enslin. Yeah. And for like an hour, I had to explain myself. Yeah, that was a, one of the things that you mentioned in the episode is that people have bumper stickers on their cars that said, I am not a member of the RAF. Because they think it'll be easier. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you drawing attention to yourself? <laughs> but, but, you know, maybe you don't get pulled over. If you put that on your bumper sticker. But yes, there were bumper stickers made. And that can't be easy. There was no red bubble then. No. <laughs> like, you actually had to go to a store and buy that. Yeah, you did. But no, there's a, there's a lot of crossover because, you know, in the you know, that whole scene, you know, that it's, for lack of a better word, like, you don't really want to call it, like, the hippie scene. It's more like the revolutionary scene. It's more yeah. like people doing, it's more of a counterculture scene. But even that doesn't quite describe it completely they always say i wasn't a hippie but i know what a hippie is but i was not a hippie every hippie says that <laughs> so i don't know what they were you're right they were something they were just the the youth generation at that time yeah, that basically because yeah, we weren't a grunge yeah i guess or anything from our age yeah grunge no no not really because I mean, i was then, a kid then yeah because that's the thing when grunge was truly big we were like 11 or 12 oh yeah younger. you know like we yeah. were yeah we were very young when like when grunge was hitting in 91 like yeah i was nine right so know? yeah so never mind that okay <laughs> i had we had new metal <laughs> like so there's that pop, i don't know pop punk. we had new metal <laughs> I had you new had new metal. I had new metal. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know, guys. Hold on to it. So tight. 
Hold on to it so tight and so close. That's right. There's, you know, <laughs> new metal, uh, there's there's nothing wrong with it. No. There, there truly is nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's how long no, there's you there's a want. lot wrong with it. There's a lot uh, wrong with I mean, it. I mean, there's three different, uh, the songs are always like some sort of ballad. It's always a November rain wannabe. Mm. And they like, they make it so grand. And I like it. I well, like it. You're talking about Evanescence. You're talking about later new metal. You're talking about when Linkin Park came in I'm thinking and of truly Linkin ruined Park. it. You're thinking of Linkin Park and you're thinking of Evanescence. You're talking about when they started touching tips with way to, when it got way too emotional and stopped being about anger. Cut my life into pieces. This, this is, is my last, last resort. resort. Is that new metal? Yeah. Oh, oh, I am new metal. <laughs> yeah. Papa, Papa Roach. Roach. Papa Roach is the definition of new metal. Really? Yeah, they're up there. It's like Papa Roach disturbed. You know, oh, wah. You know, I can't really do it. I, I, I just tried. Man, I spent all of high school trying to do the oh, wah, and could never get it. But I'm down with the sickness. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. Don't worry. I'm still down with I the just sickness. smell a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Every time I think of Papa Roach and mm. uh, what was the other one? Uh, that would be disturbed. Disturbed yeah. without the E. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and let's not even get the into e is drowning silent pool. and not a lot. What <laughs> drowning pool, letting oh, the bodies hit, hit the, the floor, floor, and so on and so forth. You know all of these songs. I'm sorry, darling, but metal. it was new metal. I am that new was metal. ours. That's what we had. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. For better or worse, it's what we had. I'm okay with that. I'm and so pop punk to a you know lesser degree. I I never got into that. Pop punk, no, yeah, no. yeah. We were talking about the other day. You're not much of a, like a screeching weasel fan, or no. like, in a, like no effects or MXPX or any of those bands. No, yeah, no. I wasn't. I, I had I had a bunch of Fat Records compilations, and that was like that was the end because those were only three dollars each. So mm -hmm. I I listened to those over and over again. But. I remember when I was in high school, I took my brother to an MXPX concert. I think, yeah, like that was his first concert when he was a kid because I th I just imagined it to be a children's show. <laughs> I'm not trying to be like, yeah. I'm not, I'm really not, but I just thought I was like, here, you, you can do that. And I'll go see Andrew WK by myself. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And Andrew WK is far more mature. Yes. <laughs> but well, how I was that show so. though? I would have loved to have seen him live. MXPX? No. <laughs> Andrew WK. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, great. Of course. Great. Yeah. It was great. It was like everything you want in Andrew WK. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, uh, Allison Bam cat says my first real concert was Ozfest 03 and Disturbed was the headliner. Wow, 03. I went yeah, to Ozfest yeah. once, but m much later, I did go to Ozfest once. It sucked, <laughs> but it was really cool to see Ozzy in person, though. I always wanted to go to Ozfest. That's I, I regret. He was propped up, and, <laughs> but he he did a good job. He did this the whole time. This that's that's the Ozzy. I'm movie. Ozzy this, Osbourne. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and he did he really did a great job for being a man being propped up. And, and Allison, really? Yes, he very much did. Allison Bamcat, another with another good, uh, an, another very good uh, comment here. Deftones are considered new metal, and that's hard for me to recon with at thirty-five. And uh. there, I will say there are two good new metal bands, two metal ba two new metal bands that I will defend, that I will say that transcend new metal and still to this day deserve credit as solid bands, and that would be Deftones. Okay. And System of a Down. Okay. All right. I will defend System the first. System of a Down is new metal? I will. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Wow. Yeah. I will defend the first two System of a Down albums until the day I die. Those Both of those albums are incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something really important to you. All right. Oh, no. We had breaking news. Babe, you're not trying hard enough. You're obviously not doing well enough. Now go out there and show us how you really can do it. Oh, it's man. How much did he practice that? You need to knock on that guy's door tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. and say, I am ready, sensei. See that? Teach me everything. Well, that's I am thing. your grasshopper. You don't have to do it well. You just have to hit the... You can't go, oh, ah, 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 ah. You have to, oh, ah. And you know, you, and you just gotta hit it before the. Da -da 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 you gotta. Listen, that's it's gotta between be over. you and your instructor now. <laughs> I can't believe it. All right, let's see. That's let's, so cool, though. Let's check out another video. This is a. a this is a. <laughs> this is a TV movie that was. This is incredible. Someone took a song mm -hmm. back in the seventies, late seventies, early eighties. I think this is, might be mid to early to mid eighties. They took a song, and they made a TV movie out of it. And it looks incredible. You're 
This is also new metal. <laughs> Wednesday, the hit song is now television's most provocative new motion picture. I want to see you. Lee Remick, George Papard. It's no game, Dan. George Papard. I want to marry you. She loved her husband, but that didn't mean she couldn't fall in love with another man. With George Papard. <laughs> another man. <laughs> I have needs I didn't have. And what did I do wrong? Torn between two lovers at nine, eight central and... Okay, so she fell in love with George Papar. So I, I don't, I, I don't know what the schedule is. It's new metal, and then this. What is this? And what song is this? And why do they make a movie out of this? The, the lunchbox the, out of this. The song was obviously torn between two lovers. By who? Torn between two lovers. I, that's all I know is just because I just heard it. <laughs> I was. I meant to look it up and look up what who sang "Torn Between Two Lovers." Can you look it up? You've got the computer in front of you. This is work. Yeah, torn, this is, I'm done working. "Torn Between Two Lovers" is the song. George Papar was the middle-aged frumpy man that they chose. He was the lover. Yeah, he was the lover. Well, Mary the other lover. McGregor. Mary McGregor. God bless her. God, uh, God bless her. Yes, uh, and and the husband was Joseph Bologna. Joseph. <laughs> Joey Baloney? His yes. name is, is the husband was Joey Baloney. He was the cook. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh but you know, good for them for uh making this this movie out of a song. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I just love the, the fact that you're like, oh, I got some really cool No Dogs music videos to show. <laughs> <laughs> because to be honest, I do know a couple of them, but uh, the rest of these, I do not know what you're going to show at all. That's great. That's great. Actually, uh, all right, so before we get to more, um, I do want to... Um, I do want to answer this question from Knox Harrington 221. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get the reference. I what, get it. What is it? Is it Big Lebowski? Oh. It was that was the uh, artist, the artist, and it is actually germane to the question that they're asking. Ooh. Do you have any of the early Kraftwerk albums where they were playing actual acoustic instruments? Autobahn. No, yes. this no, was no, far I, before. I, I, that's from B the Big Lebowski. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's like too late. Uh, yes, actually, we uh, I, I we will I'll bring it in for uh, for the next vinyl haul possibly. Is that I was able to get a hold off of Discogs, of course, um, a mint, a near mint uh, copy of a collection that a British label did. I think it was Vertigo that did it. That did some real good pressings back in the mm -hmm. day. It might even be a French pressing now that I think about it. When I consider the material that it was printed on, it might be French. It feels. French. French. Well, it was post war, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, if it was British, it would have been made out of really shitty material because all of the record sleeves out of Britain in the 70s were all made of god awful material, the glue's coming apart. This is real solid. This is real heavy. So I think it's a French pressing, but it's got all of those early craft work songs when they were playing, like when, you know, wh who was the flute player? Was it. Um, Klaus Dinger? No. Klaus Dinger, yeah. It's it like, could yeah, have been. Yeah, Klaus Dinger going nuts on the flute. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. But yeah, we do own a, a wonderful collection that we actually just got. And we're going to get to Kraftwerk soon. We're, we're working on Can. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to get Can out soon, eventually. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> you just wait. And then Faust. And then I think Kraft, Kraftwerk is going to be after that. So you can, you know, get ready for that. Yeah, get ready for that. We will have to get ready for that because we're still reading. And by the way, it's very dry and the free jazz is hard to learn. Free jazz is very hard to so learn. So hard. And that brings us to Wing Lord's comment. I don't have a question. I just want to thank y'all for helping me rediscover the song Vitamin C in the first oh, Rock yes. episode. Sorry, I got very excited. So we because we just played just a little bit of a snippet of it. And we've been, I've been playing Can all week. He heard it and he says and heard it in Inherent Vice and always thought that was a dope song. And what's interesting, that's also how I discovered Vitamin C. Oh really? Yeah, I I went and saw Inherent Vice uh, in the theater. Uh, almost had a panic attack because it was the middle of winter in New York City, and I was wearing like and it was I think it was like. 10 degrees outside mm -hmm. and I had on like two sweaters and this big huge army jacket that I used to wear uh, and they had it, the uh, temperature turned up it was probably 90 degrees in that theater oh and, I, <laughs> and you couldn't get out of it like and a straight could, jacket or something well, I, I, yeah I was just because like it was one of those pack. it was the the Magnolia theater, theater you oh know? Yeah, yeah like this just packed in and real okay. small uh, and like and I was having to like shift all of my sweaters around and I'm taking them off but I'm still covered in them because it has to all be done. 
anyway, because I didn't want to put that shit on the fucking floor of a New York City movie theater. It's terrible. But I remember. <laughs> what movie song, were you watching again? Inherent Vice. Oh, right, right, yeah. Because that's, that song opens the movie. It, but even through that panic attack, mm -hmm. I kept remembering things like, remember to look up what fucking song that was <laughs> at the beginning of this fucking movie. Because that song was so fucking incredible. And I remembered. And that's how I got in the can was through Inherent Vice. The movie, I need to watch it again. I need to revisit it. But I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, like I like um, New Metal. <laughs> it's the same thing, same thing, same thing. Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. I got to see that, though. Well, speaking of things we like, mm -hmm. it's time for the Vinyl Hall. <gasps> really? Already? Yeah. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, it's cool. Okay, oh my gosh. All right. All right, so we are going to be starting off with... This is a sound... For, this is... Oh. We're going to be starting off with, uh, this is the sound, this is a reissue because I don't think it was ever actually issued on vinyl in the first place. At home, we've been on a real big Bruce Lee kick lately. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're, uh, we're right now we're on like Enter the Dragon. We're, we're going, right in the middle of yeah, it Yeah, right we're going now. through all his movies. But we checked out one of his early Hong Kong movies and the soundtrack was so good that we had to get it. Bruce Lee, the Big Boss original soundtrack. This is this is a sleeper right here. Yes. No, it, that this was really fun to watch and listen to. So you can put this on. You just put this on in the background. Yeah, so whenever far. Whenever you want. So far, it's my favorite of all the Bruce Lee movies we've watched. Wasn't that directed by Bruce Lee? No. That was oh. the, one, the one that's not as good was directed by Bruce Lee. I love it, though. But he does all the, he directs all the, like, choreography, yeah, right? I like, think, it's, like, kind of like a vehicle for him just to do his, like, cool shit. Totally. Yeah, I, I think Way of the Dragon was the one that they let Bruce Lee direct. Uh, and it was, originally, Way of the Dragon was supposed to be called Into the Dragon, but then he got a call from Hollywood saying we want to do a Bruce Lee movie because before then it was all Hong Kong movies and he was like Enter the Dragon's way too good of a name it's got to be that's got to be my Hollywood debut is Enter the Dragon you re I, I how did you memorize this <laughs> we've been watching this and I I you know we go through the IMDb and then one of us be like oh from our iPad did you know like we're wearing glasses did you know about this I can't believe you remember that yeah I don't know why that fact is stuck in my head so much but yeah it's just I think about it like yeah Way of the Dragon, it should be Enter the Dragon, but it's not. But it's not. It but makes it's not. sense because it had to be bigger and then he was going to be a big star. Yeah. yeah. And and this soundtrack, like, because we got it for, like, the cool 60s vibe, like, the cool, like, just, like, the sort of walking around badass 60s, like, kind of grindhouse. Like, it's the sort of, it's all music you'd hear in, like, a Tarantino film. Yeah. Except when I listened to it the other night... There's all this strange Moog music throughout, like You're that right. I that I didn't notice yeah. when we watched the movie at all. I guess it was like way in the background, or maybe they recorded it and didn't end up putting it in the film. But it was all this really weird ambient Moog music. And by the way, oh man, big Moog news! Big what? Moog news! This is bad news. What? I got bad news about Moog today. They got bought out. Oh, that Moog got bought out. One of the last, like in an independent, like a a company that prides itself on being independent, prides itself on building all their stuff in America in their uh, factory in North Carolina. I think it's in Asheville. Um, but yeah, they got bought out. So I would say if you're go buy one today. Yes, if you're planning, <laughs> if you are waiting, yes, acquire by conglomerate in music. Oh uh, no way! Yeah. Yes, uh, it's, it's you wait till now to break the news. <laughs> <laughs> now? Yeah, I know. This is I, how I find out. I know. Well, I read it. I was reading it during it, uh, like during breakfast, and I was like, "Oh, no, terrible!" <laughs> but you were in the shower, uh, and by the time yeah. you know you got out, I would I had moved on. Uh, but it was yeah, terrible news. But no, it's it's awful news. So yeah, if you are planning on buying a Moog, now is the time. I highly recommend a mm. Matriarch. Uh, uh, or a uh, the sub um, sub harmonicum is also wonderful. Sub twenty five is a wonderful machine. The DFAM also great. Uh, but yeah, I I'd, it really makes me want to like. I need to start saving up now to buy a Moog One because that damn thing. That's that's a big purchase. Really? How that's, much does it cost? I'm not going to say. Oh, my God. I'm not going to say. Okay, but we're not going to have one. I'm just. <laughs> we can have. Well, we always get like the. Sometimes we get like the knockoff version of things. And sometimes. That, oh, that's that, not the same. That's that not the you, same. You okay. Get, you can't get the knockoff version of a Moog one. You just can't. But that's something I'm going to be saving up for. For a long time. <laughs>
But I just know, but I just got to make sure it's like this is a, a pre buyout Moog one. I'm so sorry about your news. No, it was, I, 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 was, I was actually uh, quite disappointed. <laughs> uh, the next record is that this is one that I took a chance on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know whether it was going to be good or not. And turns out it is absolutely incredible. Oh, yes. Yes. This is, it's called Bolo Bash. Northwest Record Hall of Fame. This is a compilation from a uh, record label called Bolo. Uh, these are all artists that were from the Northwest. Uh, I don't really know the exact year y- just yet. Judging from the songs, it seems like early to mid '60s, somewhere around there, mm-hmm. uh, because there's a lot. A lot of it's like frat boy sax rock. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, I think we played it the other night. Like it's like it's really cool shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a couple of songs on there that are completely out of the norm. There's one called Oasis by the Exotics. That's so it's an sort of an exotica type. Um, it's like an exotica rock song, which is very cool. It's very strange. Yes. But the one song on this album that legitimately blew my mind is this one right here. No doubt about it by the Chanteurs. Let's listen to a little bit of it right now. This shit is incredible. This is a girl group. I mean, I just, yeah, they're yeah. like, just, I love it because the song just keeps unfolding more and more as it goes on. And unlike a lot of girl groups that have that like kind of a lead singer, like the, this band would like switch off all the time because I have, they actually have a little bio on the back. This offering by those four lovely young ladies, the Chanteurs, is everybody's favorite. The gals have a great commercial sound all their own. Their ability to interchange parts and lead singers adds to their fascination. Watch this group. <laughs> they sound amazing. I love this. It is, it's sexy, and it's not boring. Yeah. It's like new metal, really, <laughs> if you really think about it. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Yeah, it's just like, around again. Yeah, 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 new metal. Sexy, like when you watch that Mudvayne video but for it's like Dig. Sexy, like, but not too much. I yeah. think I think sexy anytime I think of Mudvayne, definitely. Mm. Uh, I like them. What were they called again? <laughs> Mudvayne? No. The other- <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. The Chanteurs. The Chanteurs. And I do, we just got this record like yesterday, so mm-hmm. I haven't been able to like look and see if there's more stuff from the mm-hmm. Chanteurs or if this was just one of like if they only released one single because that's why these um why these compilations are worth checking out because sometimes like this might that might have been the only thing that the Dynamics ever put out besides that one. Uh or maybe Dave Lewis. Or, you know, or, I mean, he put out a couple. But Tony and the Statics, <laughs> that's the only yeah, one they got. Yeah, there's another one right there. Yeah, Tony I mean, and the Statics, Hey, Mrs. Jones, that song's great. So, yeah. Because yeah, that song's more of like R&B rock. It's very fucking cool. You're getting very much into the compilation. Because when we started, when we started our DJing career about three weeks ago... <laughs> <laughs> um, it started then, and it's I guess it's ongoing, right? Mm-hmm. Even if we haven't DJed since, yeah. Uh, compilation seems to be the way to go, yeah. And especially if you get them in bulks, right? Yeah. And then that way you can like mess in with with the records and everything. It's really really fun. Yeah. So yeah, I've got a couple of great compilations that I'm gonna because I really wanted because the last time we did like a punk DJ night, I want to do like just a full like we get to play whatever the fuck. We'll do we want. a No Dogs in Space uh, DJ. Yeah. We'll DJ. I, I love DJ. I mean, if you guys don't mind, like the occasional random stop. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter. I, I have fun doing it. I doesn't love ma- it. Yeah, doesn't matter at all. Mm-hmm. Next one up. This one, the record is absolutely the music is wonderful. I think it's from the mid '50s, something like that. It's a Cuban record. The cover though is incredible. That's so cool. Cuban cha cha cha, Jose Fajardo. 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 Muy bien. Muy bien. Yeah. 
And orchestra. Dunka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and orchestra. Uh, this record, it's worth, like, some of these songs are on YouTube. It's worth going on and checking them out. Um, the songs, what was great about this one, yeah, because it's one of those where on the back where it just has, like, you can tell it's kind of old if we can go back to it, where it just has the listing of, like, all the rest of the records that this label has put out like it doesn't have it doesn't have the track listing at all it's just it's just another advertisement for the label uh but this one was Mm -hmm. cool because they had a whole song called carolina which i hadn't i'd never heard your word your name in a song before it was very cool in my head yeah my my name's shown up here and there Mm -hmm. well one or two uber drivers like be like oh yeah there's this great song from africa or this great song like carolina apparently it's weird right it's a music it's a musical name it is but it's always weird when there's another carolina although my name is so common (laughs) in latin america world yeah as i said before i'm like a caitlin or a laura yeah but to the point where isn't like the prime minister of Costa Rica named Carolina Hidalgo? No, she was trying to be the president. <laughs> she ran for president. The, Carolina Hidalgo, she ran for president. Luckily, she didn't win because I was. I still want to be at least the third most famous Carolina Hidalgo <laughs> in this world, okay? Luckily, I'm oh. still holding on, but um, she lost the primaries. Uh, that's yeah. uh, that good for you. <laughs> yes, yeah, very, I made some calls. You. No, I know what you mean. Every time I hear like so, a character named Marcus in a TV show or, or in a movie, like my my first thought is always, that's a fucking stupid name for a character. <laughs> no, like, that's, it's not. that's dumb. Why would you? ever name a character marcus that's a stupid name for a character wow i don't i don't know why it just sounds so weird and out of place because it's not like steve or you know like tom or bob you know where it's all around you know marcus isn't the most rare name but it's not a common name it fits with you thank you it does thank you i'm not a mark no no never call him that oh and abandy and the bd Said, would love to see Carolina DJ. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, I would love to see me DJ too. Uh, as Remember, guys, I will take advice, tips, whatever, or maybe try not to distract me because I can't like, but I figure it out after a while. Yeah. I, I do a good job. Uh, I worked on my set list very like clearly. Like I put it together. Well, you actually put a lot of it together, but I also. Well, you'd never done it before. I, I, helped. I helped. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, it's just we I, both helped. Hey, I, I, I have only helped helped you along the first time. Every time after this, you're on your own. God damn it! <laughs> well, I hope <laughs> AMDB I you, or I, whatever your name is. I hope you come and help. <laughs> I'm gonna need help, so I would love all the DJs around the world to come and watch us DJ. Uh, uh, impossible. Demon Lemur Nick. Ask Marcus, do you appreciate AFI? I need to know. I didn't ask if you like them. Do you appreciate the band? And I'd say, yes, I appreciate AFI. I'm not going to say I'm a fan because mm-hmm. I'm not. We appreciate it. But we appreciate you. I, get, I would, I would get a, give AFI an appreciation ring. <laughs> I would. That's He's what I would bringing in ninety day Beyonce. That's what I would give him I, an appreciation ring. Yes, and also our the last record that we got goes right into the book hole. Mm-hmm. This last, let's see where is where is it? We got which one is? Oh yes, scream! Speaking of scream, no more censorship with the liner notes. And if you want to look on the back. There's a tiny little Dave Grohl oh, right there. Oh, look at him. He's so young. He mm-hmm. entered He entered his military service at 17. <laughs> and he, he stayed with them for, I think, about four years. Yeah. Yeah. Until he went to Nirvana? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because he could, just couldn't take it anymore. I, I, I believe the bassist had a, a, a bit of a... Uh, crack cocaine problem jesus christ <laughs> he had know. a crack problem i don't know he was smoking it i don't really know what the street dr- drugs names are anymore no d- I is, used it to ser- know. is it seriously a crack problem because that, that's insane like a crack like okay like heroin sure you know <laughs> really co- you're gonna co- judge on like this cocaine fine Quaaludes, you, you know whatever, Quaaludes, whatever. crack mm-hmm. you don't cr- crack you don't smoke cr- you don't smoke crack he was smoking something Something real strong, maybe freebasing or something like that. Okay, well, know. no, okay. you're not going to be in a fucking an Amer- You're not going to be in a Virginia hardcore band and have enough money to freebase cocaine. Well, they made it work. <laughs> they did. Well, it's because they they ended up in uh, North Hollywood, actually, where live. We're live in North Hollywood live right now. Live from North Hollywood. And so, but then they kind of broke up a little bit. And of course, Dave Grohl was like, screw this. I'm going to go to Nirvana and be their fifth drummer and see if that works out. <laughs> and it did. But, um, but yeah, no, they had a lot of problems. Although they did 
play like they did reform and they kept playing they're still playing they they just like announced their their next like uh record unfortunately the day before ken Stax passed away yeah so i mean i i think you can hear him on the record but i'm sure yeah but, but yeah, yeah i guess they're playing here in la and zebulon real soon probably probably but like uh i do remember seeing like about scream they said like they were made fun of a lot because they weren't super hardcore like they they didn't have the spiky hair and they didn't wear the boots because they would wear tennis shoes instead kind of the same thing like that husker do would have a problem with when they do hardcore shows mission and burma had the same problem too yeah yeah and, and of course the replacements had the problem yes yes because they just didn't like fit the mold or whatever which is always the dumbest thing in the world when you become so into this counterculture that you reject anyone that doesn't look like you. And then guess what? You're, you're the thing that you hate. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to be like that. Yeah. No. Happens again and again. Always be welcoming. Always yes. let people in. Don't be a fucking gatekeeper. That's the worst. That's the, that is the number one lesson of the show. Don't be a gatekeeper. Yes. Share the shit that you love. When someone comes to you and says, Hey, I want to, I want to learn about this. Let them in. Let them in. If they show interest, let him in, because the more we spread the music, the better the fucking world gets. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I wish someone told me that when I, I was wearing a Catholic schoolgirl uniform going to these shows, going to see Andrew WK. Be like, <laughs> I didn't have time to change because I live 45 minutes away. <laughs> but Pete Stahl did say when they did their first show, when Scream did their, their first show, that, uh, that Jello Biafra was there because he was there with DOA. And uh, DOA, like the, like pretty much the whole venue was, they were there for DOA mm -hmm. and Jello Biafra probably. Yeah. And so, uh, but they got pissed. The fans got like the audience got pissed off because like, you know, they're like, hi, we're scream and, you know, we're wearing tennis shoes and all that business. And um, they were really mad. But Jello Biafra, he was very kind to them. He was very encouraging. He's like, no, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. You know what? I've The funny thing is that the only bad things I've ever heard about Jello Biafra come from other members of the dead Kennedys. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe that. Yeah. Every, everyone else is like, yeah, great guy to work with. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys have never heard, there's an album from Jello Biafra that I've rediscovered recently that's incredible. It's an album that Jello Biafra did with No Means No. Oh, is that the one we listened to recently? Yeah, that's the one oh, we listened to so the other good. night. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's so uh, good. Yeah, I think it's called Jesus Was a Terrorist. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's I either, love it. That's either that, that, I know that's a song on the album, but I don't know if that's what the album's called. But yeah, it's like it's incredible. Like a flu ride is like the just incredible. Like these long seven-minute diatribes, No Means no kick so much fucking ass. I know. And you put Jello Biafra's voice behind that, uh, and it's absolutely incredible. But yeah, check check that one. I love it. I love it. You're right. Yeah. That was so good. Yeah. Anyway, so Scream, actually, I went, I, this is going to take us to the book haul right now, because I did go uh, on my, I did check out my Touch and Go, the complete hardcore punk zine, 1979. Oh, well, the sky is falling and I want my mommy. That's what. <laughs> That's the one you guys, you're talking about. Yeah, the sky is falling. remember that? The sky is falling and I want my mommy. Yeah, it's fucking, it's absolutely incredible. The, the album art is so fucking good. It's 1991. It's That's like great. it's everyone at the the top of their game. Like it's so fucking good. Mm -hmm. But touch and go. Okay, book haul. Book haul time, right? Can you put in the book haul uh book haul cam? Yeah, of course. Okay. So this is amazing. Of course, I think this was uh printed was is this Brazilian? Uh, I, I'm almost positive. Yeah, it's yeah, Brazilian. A Brazilian. Yeah. So the funny thing about this publisher is that we shared like the same building when we were living in Greenpoint in Brooklyn and, and also recording right around the corner from our house. Yeah, they, they were yeah, Bazillion. Unfortunately, they they left right before we moved in. But yeah, Bazillion has put out so many great books. Like they put put out a book about like Texas punk recently mm -hmm. that's like was real. It's really, I mean, I thumb through it and buy it, but it looked really cool. And then New York hardcore scene book, uh, 1983 to 1993, really, really good too. Yeah, yeah, Bazillion is a... There's a solid publisher of punks and Fantastic. punk books. Fantastic. Yeah. And this touch and go, this is like the complete hardcore punk zine from what, 79 to 83? Yeah. And it's really fun because you, I, I've had this book for years and I still haven't gone through all of it, but I have used it for the Misfits. Misfits series. Mm -hmm. I've used it for Dead Kennedy series, and then when we, you know, when we did a lot of Washington hardcore, because you know, Scream, and then this is where I found about uh, I found out about No Trend today. No Trend. They're amazing. They're from Maryland. They started in 1982, and they played a show with Scream. And this is how I found out about it. By the way, can I, I need you to read this? Because okay, 
Okay, so this is a punk scene from like the late seventies, early eighties, mm. and I'll, I'll give you the whole story about it next time we do this because I really, I, I know we are running out of time, but I really love you to read a review, a live review, because they have like album reviews, live reviews. Uh, they put in so many fun, like so much fun artwork. I think do we have some artwork up here? Actually, like some cool, like oh yeah, yeah, that that's one of the reviews. Yeah, that's right there, and then you can read from it. Uh, oh yeah, right there. So this is a review where like uh, they were gonna, they're supposed to review that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh come on, that's really fun. That's great. There and then there's rough trade right there. This is so cool. This is what I've been doing all day on an edible, by the way, <laughs> at work, literally at my office. I am jealous. <laughs> but Thank this, you. but this is what's so cool about like touch and go is that you know you've got that pic, you know you've got the scream thing on one side and on the other side. This is just a picture of Mantis from Venom. Mm -hmm. like, that's it. It's just a picture yeah. of Mantis from Venom. And that you don't, there's nothing else. I'm going to do this book haul <laughs> with Touch and Go, like, as much as I possibly can. Yeah. But and we also need to uh, can bring in uh, the uh, collection we have, uh, the two collections we have from Search and Destroy. Yes. Which I prefer. I search and, I prefer Search and Destroy myself. We're oh, talking wow. about old zines. Wow. My preference is Search and Destroy. I don't like Queen. <laughs> I, don't like, I like new I metal. I like, I like Queen. It's just that their version of Crazy Little Thing Called Love is shit. <laughs> So. But you still like the king. I found out about that today. <laughs> okay, so uh, just uh, so I yeah, please read. Okay, so this reviewer was obviously pissed off because he was drunk, and then there was a lot of problems because you know these uh, the hardcore shows. This, this stuff happens, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, no trend got a review from Touch and Go, which is really fun. I haven't read this yet. Okay, just, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No tree, no trend need to learn that to accomplish their goal of mm -hmm. alienation and a massive love to hate us syndrome, they must at least be competent musicians <laughs> or competent manipulators or competent something. I wanted to hate them. Really, I did. And got yes. a, and got a mediocre mush of nondescript half ass nothingness. And that's okay. Wow. Thank you for your reading. Thank you so much. I'm so that's, glad I asked. That's how, that's how I hear every fucking reviewer in my head I, always, especially music reviewers, I especially I, punk music reviewers. You know, they all sound like I that. loved. I love it. I was like, they're just arrogant. They try to do everything. <laughs> but the thing is, is that re that reviewer didn't realize the humor and the well, more like the anti-humor mm -hmm. of No Trend. I just found out about No Trend, so I want to give a big shout out. Uh, the, their first album, Too Many Humans. I was just talking about it with our producer, Eric, and, and he can play a song. Can you play a song? Because this is amazing. Oh, this is already sick. I love that bass. Best part, No Trend released their um, third album by Touch and Go Records. <laughs> So I'd imagine, so what year is this? 1984. Man, it's just, the more you study, the more you hear that Kurt Cobain just stole everything. Oh yeah, no, um, <laughs> Too Many Humans was the working title for Bleach. No shit. The name of this out? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's just, I'm, I'm going on Redbubble. I'm getting that t-shirt. <laughs> or I'm going to get that bumper sticker. No, this is, that's Kurt Cobain, Cobain's singing voice exactly. Yep. That's incredible. And the lead singer is Jeff Menges. Uh -huh. He's the one who directed the John Holmes biofilm of Flesh and Blood in 1990. No shit. Yeah, he went to film school after all, No Trend for a little bit, or in between No Trend or whatever, and uh, directed a made for TV film. <laughs> That we may uh, have you seen this? I actually didn't see that. Have you seen this? Do you have know you about this? Have you seen this? I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, but you know, it's hilarious. Like if you really get into it, though, if you listen to it, it's I I cackled. I laughed a lot. Yeah. The first album is amazing, as Eric and I were talking about earlier, and then the later albums are um, a, an enigma. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. Uh, I would say so. I listened to their album that came out as uh, it came out. Uh, what in 2001 called more and it was um very interesting i okay. mean it's, it's just a practical joke it's anti-hardcore and then it's a joke on everybody 
who listens, who's not them. <laughs> they're they're Which, making a joke against the world, and I, I love it. I respect so much. I respect that. I respect that dedication so fucking much. I have a quote, actually, from Ken Rudd, the drummer uh, for Nartrend, when he did the, he recorded the second album with them. He said, Jeff, you know, the lead singer, uh, was a very funny guy. I think what you call nihilistic, I would call asshole-istic. <laughs> Being an asshole to poke people out of their waking slumbers, which is sort of the point point of punk rock yeah. so i thought that was just like a little you know i really really love no trend i really i love the whole idea I, I really hope he doesn't think the earth is flat because i'm a big fan of him <laughs> i really hope you don't think that no i that song was great i, I can't wait to go home you're gonna love no the more. album the whole album is exactly what you want it to be Hell by yeah. the way and and you can also read to it by the way yeah on edibles <laughs> i found out today it was yeah. a fun day at work it sounds like it yeah but speaking of going home and listening to stuff people do ask us a lot like what do you listen to at home but because you know we got the vinyl hall we'll tell you well you know but that's like new stuff that's coming in sometimes it's old stuff that you know but we've had around for a while but they ask us like what what do you listen to like just normally and the video that we're about to show you i'm really not joking this is not this is not a joke. This is, I would say, 30 to 40 percent. Not a joke. What, 30 oh. to 40 percent what is just on our turntable a lot of the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, we do live in Pennywise's lair. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And, and Marcus, I, I don't know if I should say this, but he's not usually clothed. So, at home. Not usually, no. I feel I, shame I, in front of the dog, but Marcus <laughs> feels no shame. No and then he'll whatsoever. play this. Yeah. Dad. <laughs> yeah, because that's how you enjoy life. <laughs> that's, how <you> <laughs> yes. that's how you live life to the fullest. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. I love that guy. He goes on tour with them to do that. <laughs> I love that you had to get a hotel room for the guy who goes, Whoop. you know, that's really cool. That's really good for your expenses. That's great. Uh, Laser Wolf 907 asked, Marcus, what are your favorite drum gear brands? Man, when I was a drummer, I was always so goddamn poor. My favorite drum gear band brands were whatever I could afford at the time. Yeah, you it, found some things off the side of the street. Yeah, definitely. No, no, I got this big ass, you know, like marching bass drum that I found on the street that I used quite a bit. But yeah, I it. didn't I did not have enough money to have like a favorite or anything like that. Although, you know, I have got some cheap Sabians that I used for a long time that were always real fucking cool. Yeah. And you know, Zildjian's fine. Go with that. Yeah. Go with that. They're like a thousand years old or something. They're older than Jesus, I've heard. Do we have time for anything else? Because I know we're almost we're almost out of time. Yeah, we are almost out of time. You know, we can actually... Um, oh, you know what you're ready for. Oh, what we're ready for? What? We're finally ready for, because this, is, this has happened. People, our chat, we know, oh, is right. always asking, yes. what bands are you going to do? Are you going to do this band? Are you going to do that band? Wait, thank you for asking. Which, thank you for asking. So we figure that at the end of every episode... We're going to go through the list, and we're going to tell you. We are? Video game music. Okay. The Saints. Oh, wait, wait. We go just one by one? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, video game music. The, uh, Nintendo Core. Sure. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Let's keep it, let's keep it up there so we can read The Saints. The, yeah. Yes. And also The Aints. Yeah. <laughs> we will do them too. Well, The Saints also. The Saints uh, have some very uh, problematic um, opinions. Now, okay, next one. Yeah, yeah, Europop. Next Europop. No idea. Uh, Absolutely maybe, not. Maybe New Order. Maybe? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe New Order. Yeah, maybe continuing in the new, yeah. the New Order trend. Prince. Mm, um, no. no. I've, not, I, I read a, a book about Prince, and it's really cool, really interesting. But I don't think we. It's, it doesn't make sense for us to do it. To I'm be not honest. A, I'm not a big enough Prince fan. Yeah. Uh, to to do that. Any Australians? Yes. Uh, yeah. We're, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's. It, 
Uh, Nick Cave, NC, maybe? NC, Nick Cave. Yes, you said just said Nick Cave. I was going to say NC, you know, but yes, Nick Cave. Yeah, Nick Cave, whatever. <laughs> uh, Noi, yes. absolutely. Noi's is, on the list. Yeah, Noi is going to be a big part of our Kraut Rock series. Uh, Orange, Origins of uh, Rock and Soul. I would love to. Yeah, I, I mean, we'll love prob- to. It, of course, we like to tell long stories through, or we like to tell like the stories through the bands that did it. Uh, and we have definitely kicked kicked around the idea of a big Elvis series yes, in the past. Yes, but, but also all the wonderful people that he took from we uh, will start with well that's that's a bit of a that's a simplification oh wow. of, of elvis's uh, we, influences we, it's a simplification we, we can stretch that out <laughs> to see to see all the layers of what he took yeah it's yes, far it's, all the stealing it's that far, was taken it, from the white man it's full it's it's far more complicated than that is it's it? far more complicated than that. It's nuance. <laughs> there's a lot of nuances. There's you don't a, have to be a white man apologist. There's a lot of new. I'm just saying there's a lot of nuances to the Elvis story. <laughs> a lot story. of ins and outs, a lot of what have you. <laughs> it's a nuanced story okay. is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that El- Elvis was the, the first goth kid, by the way. The first um, so- southern goth kid ever, yeah. okay? Because he wore eyeliner and everything. Mm-hmm. So, And yes, we are going to do Spanish punk one day. I would like to, but I the first thing, I before we do Spanish punk, I do want to do uh, Riot Girl. Yeah, we've been talking about. We're definitely this. gonna do Riot Girl before I mean, we but get to we Spanish talk Pop. so much. So. Yeah, we really do. We really just throw things around. Uh, Radio Birdman, I like Radio Birdman, but I don't think so. Uh, Minnesota Rock. We did it with replacements. Yes, we yeah, did. And then yeah. we also did it with uh, everyone's talking about the bird. Bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. So, Actually, so with the, yeah, the trash man. We've done two two series on Minnesota Rock. Yeah. Uh, Tool, no. Oingo Boingo. <laughs> <laughs> Oingo Boingo is a maybe. That's a, that is a maybe because that's more about like that. But I a, like what, how you're thinking. Yeah, like that's, I have wanted to, I've thought about doing an Oingo Boingo slash Danny Elfman series and Blood Ceremony. Never heard of them. I, I would imagine it's a metal band. New metal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching our show. Thank you so um, much. Yes, I absolutely. Go listen to No Trend today and Galloping Corners, by the way. Uh, big, huge. Uh, like, I, I'm obsessed with them. Why can't we talk about them? We got to talk about them sometime. They're from Hungary. I'm, I'm loving the Eastern Bloc rock. That's what I'm into these days. Um, and maybe next time you'll let us know what you're into. And then we're also going to get into a really cool book haul about rock and roll high school. So if you guys want to watch that before or after. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, well, go watch Rock and Roll High School. Come mm-hmm. back to us in two weeks. Yes. But yeah, we'll be here every every other Monday at 7 p.m. PST. Mm-hmm. And thank you all so much for listening. See you soon. Goodbye. Bye.